Hello, mathematicians. I'm Aiden Gonzalez, and I'm a recently graduated high school math student working with Skew the Script on a few of the algebra lessons. Today, we're going to be talking about the COVID-19 vaccine through the lens of exponential decay. Let's skew it. Today, we're going to be talking about exponential decay. This is lesson 5.4 in our algebra course sequence. We're going to be talking again about COVID-19 and the spread of the coronavirus um, and the coronavirus pandemic, which was one of the worst pandemics that the world has ever seen. There were more than 600,000 deaths in the United States and 4 million worldwide. In a previous lesson, we talked about the early COVID-19 timeline. On January 21st, we saw the first case in the United States, and then only two months later, there were 20,000 cases in New York alone. Again, in a previous lesson, we talked about the spread of COVID-19 follows exponential growth, where the disease spreads slowly, and then as time goes on, the growth gets faster and faster. In the winter of 2020 to 2021, the infections and deaths reached their peak. In January 2021, the United States had 250,000 new cases per day. Thankfully, help finally arrived in the form of a COVID-19 vaccine, but there were doubts about the vaccine. People heard that maybe they made it too fast, it's unsafe. They heard that it gives you COVID. People were hearing that you're more likely to die from the vaccine than from COVID-19 itself. In today's key analysis, we're gonna be talking about, did the COVID-19 vaccine work? You can follow along using the guided notes at the URL below. So the first topic that we're gonna be talking about is features of exponential decay. Let's talk quickly about exponential growth and how viruses spread. We have an infected individual. That, that person spreads their disease to two new people. So on day one, we have two new infections. Those two people each spread it to two new people. So on day two, we have four new infections. On day three, we have eight new infections. On day four, we have 16. And day five, we have 32. We can see a pattern here in the number of new infections. We multiply by two. To get today's infection number, we multiply yesterday's number by two. Here we can see exponential growth on the graph. Let's take, think of a slightly different scenario in which we have a perfect vaccine that's developed for the disease. 75% of people get vaccinated and the vaccine is safe and 100% effective. On day one, there would be 64 new infections. 64 people would have been infected, but 75% of them are vaccinated. So none of them get cystic symptoms. None of the 75% of the people who are vaccinated are symptomatic. So only 16 people are infected. On day one, we have 16 new infections. On day two, 32 people would have been infected if each of the 16 people from day one spread it to two new people, but 75% of them are vaccinated. So only eight people are infected. On day two, there are eight new infections. There's a pattern again, multiply by 0.5. To get today's infection number, we multiply yesterday's number by 0.5. We multiply yesterday's number of 8 by 0.5 to get 4 for day 3. We get 2 for day 4. And on day 5, there's only one new infection. Let's graph this exponential decay with our x being days after the vaccine and the y being the number of new infections. Here are our axes and here are our points from the graph, uh, from the table. We can see that this is modeling exponential decay. What happens to the number of new infections over time? As our time goes by, the number of new infections goes down. What happens to the rate of change in the new infections over time? We can see that at first, the decline is fast. We go from 16 new cases to eight new cases, and slowly the decline slows down. We go from only two, the uh, change, rate of change of negative two to rate of change of negative one. How can we represent this exponential decay in a mathematical model? Let's talk about modeling exponential decay. So we see that our pattern is we multiply by 0.5. We know that this repeated multiplication is called exponents and repeated multiplication by a number between zero and one is exponential decay. Let's think of our scenario again, where we have 32 infections and we multiply it by 0.5 to get 16. We multiply it by 0.5 again to get eight, by 0.5 again to get four, and by 0.5 again to get two. On day one, we multiplied 
32 by 0.5 one time to get our number of new infections, 16. On day two, we multiplied 32 by 0.5 twice to get eight. And similarly, we can see the pattern developing for days three and four. On day three, we multiplied 32 by 0.5 three times to get four. And on day four, we multiplied 32 by 0.5 four times to get two. These are our exponents. We can see that day three, we can rewrite that and re re rearrange it to say 32 times 0.5 to the third power. Third power means that we multiply 0.5 by itself three times to get four. We can rearrange uh, and rewrite all of the number of new infections um, using exponents. Uh, we can see that days since the vaccine, zero, our exponent is zero. So 32 times 0.5 to the zero power is 32. Same thing for day one. We just do 0.5 to the first power to get 16. Day two, 0.5 to the second power times 32. Um, and we can use this y equals a times b to the x. Our x is the day since the vaccine and our y is the number of new infections. Our a is our starting value, also known as our y-intercept. And our b is our decay rate, the number that we're multiplying, our multiplier. So let's start with figuring out what our b, our decay rate, our multiplier is. Well, we know that our pattern is we multiply by 0.5, so our decay rate is 0.5. We can plug that in for b. And now let's find out what our a, our start value is. Our y value, our y-intercept is our y value when our x is equal to zero. So when our x is equal to zero, that means our days since the vaccine is zero. We have that on our table right there. It's 32. So we can plug 32 in for a. So we have y is equal to 32 times 0.5 to the x. Let's plug a few values in and see if this works. Zero, when x is equal to zero, we do our exponents first using PEMDAS. We have 32 times one, because any number to the zero power is one. 32 times one is itself 32. That's what we have in our table. Let's check three. Uh, days, three days since the pandemic on day three. Y is equal to 32 times 0.5 to the third power. 0.5 to the third power is equal to 0.5 times 0.5 times 0.5, which is 0.125. 32 times 1.25, 0.125 is four. That's what we have in our new infections. Let's turn to modeling real data. In, uh, on January 8th, 2021, new COVID-19 cases in the United States peaked. Around the same time, the country started administering vaccines in larger numbers. An ideal vaccine leads to exponential decay. Did we see exponential decay with the COVID-19 vaccine? Did the vaccine work? Here's a, a graph of COVID-19 case counts in the United States. We can see that on January 8th, COVID-19 uh, cases peaked, and vaccines started to roll out. And then in the six months that followed, we do see exponential decay. We can see that uh, within the first few weeks, the growth was steadily, uh, very quickly decreasing. And then as time went on, the number of cases slowed down. Declined fast at first, slowed down over time. What about this bump in cases? Uh, in March slash April of 2020, still far fewer than half a million Americans had been vaccinated. So this is what we see this small outbreak. Since it takes a while to get everyone vaccinated, small, small outbreaks are expected. Thankfully, they're small compared to the pre-vaccine outbreaks. As vaccinations continued, we again approached an exponential decay. So it looks like the vaccine worked, but was this definitely caused by vaccines? What about the weather? Couldn't the weather have been a cause of the, the decline in COVID-19 cases? January to July, we go from winter to summer, weather gets hotter, but warm weather helps reduce the spread of viruses. Could warm weather, not the vaccine, have been the true cause for decay? And that brings us to our discussion for today. Was this exponential decay caused by the vaccine or other factors? It's not so easy to determine just from this graph, but if we extend the graph a little bit, we can see that there's an outbreak here that looks like exponential growth. This was in July, 2021, which is a warm summer month. What happened? We can see that in July, 2021, because case counts were low, mask mandates and distancing guidelines were lifted. Simultaneously, a new and more contagious variant, the Delta variant, began spreading. There was a pandemic among the unvaccinated. Severe cases spread mainly among unvaccinated individuals. 
92% of new CDC hotspot counties had lower than average vaccination rates. Unvaccinated individuals accounted for 99% of COVID-19 deaths and 97% of hospitalizations. Let's review all of our vaccine evidence together. Before vaccines rolled out, clinical trials assigned random individuals to vaccine versus placebo and showed that the vaccine was effective. After the rollout, we saw an exponential decay in the number of COVID-19 cases. And when lockdowns relaxed, severe cases spread mainly among unvaccinated individuals. Taken together, there's convincing evidence that the vaccine worked. Still, even though vaccines were free and available for months, 40% of adults remained unvaccinated as of July 2021. We can see that before, companies who were not going to mandate vaccines were, began to rethink their decision in order to prevent the spread of COVID in their workplaces and to keep them open and keep their employees safe as long as possible. You're going to discuss in class, should private companies be allowed to mandate vaccines for employees, those employees who are able to get vaccinated, and why or why not? Thank you so much for joining us to talk about exponential decay and the spread of COVID-19. I hope to see you soon.